Hey guys, Veronica here. I'm back in the greenhouse today and I want to revisit pepper pruning. Now, I know that this is how a lot of you found me and I'm really grateful for that, but I also sometimes am concerned just because I think a lot of people go online and especially on YouTube and they're looking for some like really hard and fast advice as to what they should do and when. And with gardening in particular, there is no like set rule in that space. And I think that that's kind of the trouble we get ourselves into and we've gotten ourselves into with agriculture is looking for A always equals B. And there are certain things in this space where, you know, water is going to equal a plant growing or good soil is going to equal a plant not having health issues. Like there's, there's various things and pruning to some extent will get you, you know, bushier foliage, um, potentially more production. And I think in the original video where I was talking about pepper pruning, um, in the last two or three years, my approach and methods have changed as I've interacted with more varieties of peppers. Previously, I was doing a lot of the like in between medium hot range, definitely on the smaller fruiting scale. And I didn't really factor in um, for like, what happens when you do it to a sweet pepper? Um, are there different, you know, shapes and sizes of plants that this would not apply to? Like there are all of these things where I was working with really leggy nursery plants and really leggy greenhouse plants that needed to be shaped because they weren't grown in 100% ideal conditions. So it could be things like maybe they were packed too close together at the grower, um, they're packed too close together in my greenhouse. And so I just wanted to revisit a little bit of this because I still get a lot of questions about it and see if there's not a little more methodology and like thought process that I can pass along to help you determine which ones you should prune, which ones you should prune less or more, um, which ones you should leave alone and kind of guide in that direction. So I just want to go over a couple of the plants I have here in front of me. Um, maybe not everyone, but I needed some to pick and choose from. So we're just gonna start off. Um, this guy right here, this little Jimmy Nardello pepper, it's a sweet pepper, and or fairly sweet. Um, and this was actually, it was like this guy, this Desperado that's an Anaheim variety. And it was an additional seedling that was put, it was just growing next to the larger seedling in the same pot. And so this guy, I'm not gonna prune. He was already little. He's starting to leaf out a little. And this is the thing, you guys. So when you have a plant like a pepper and it has optimal amount of light and optimal amount of airflow and there's nothing that's crowding it, you will get a well-shaped plant. And the better spacing you have and the better light you have at you know, the longer light season of the year or maybe you're using artificial lighting, then you're going to have a better shape to start out with. Those sorts of plants will not need pruning. And I think that maybe some of you were growing from seed or starts um, that were very small and in good shape. And I may have led you astray slightly just thinking, okay, everyone's dealing with really tall leggy plants like I am, not considering all these variables. So stick with me. We're going to go over the variables that you might encounter. But so like these little guys, um, this Hungarian hot banana is another one, similarly, that was a two-in-one pot. If I find those at the nursery, I almost always buy them if they're in good shape because I get two plants for the price of one. Like, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. And then I have a backup in the greenhouse should an animal decide to eat it or should a storm destroy it. There's one that's going to be sitting in here waiting to go out or if, um, you know, we get to a point in the season where it's getting too big for its pot, then I may move it out just to produce a little bit longer over the season because we have over 200 days of um, no frost here, frost-free days. <laughs> so um, in this sort of situation, when there's two in a pot, and most of the advice, I hate calling it advice, but like most of the guidance that I try to give is less a how-to and more, like less how to do something, more how to solve this problem that you may encounter. And I think there's very common problems we encounter in gardening when it comes to buying plants from nurseries, when it comes to growing our own plants. And so rather than being like, if you do it this way, you won't have any problems, I want to tackle the problems that you're most likely to encounter, which is why um, a lot of this seems to be very um, just like not traditional methods. <laughs> so uh, anyway, 
with this sort of guy, what I would do in order to get the little guy out is I'd pull this guy out of the pot and I would just start to very gently pull at the top of the seedling just to kind of try and expose a little bit of the roots there. And I kind of just pry it away a little from the main part of this plant. And then once I have it pried, and this is like trying not to damage the main plant's roots. Um, once I have it pried just enough, and what I'll do is just get in there with scissors. I'll cut at an angle down into the soil, just under this little plant on both sides of him. And then I'll see if that doesn't pop him loose. And usually I can give it just a nice firm little tug and then he'll still have some roots attached. Now, this plant may or may not make it, but you're gonna have to cut it out anyway because you don't want two plants growing that close together. Um, that may cause you some problems in the long run. So what I normally do is just get this guy into some soil, which I do not have prepared right now, but I'll get him into some soil as soon as I'm done shooting. And there's enough roots left on this little plant to where he should recover just fine um, I may even plant it slightly deeper just because I'm noticing a little bit of adventitious roots happening here. So I'm thinking that maybe up to this last leaf node um, it may develop a little more roots. So this guy will go in a new pot, this guy will go outside. Because it is an Anaheim type, which is a much larger pepper, um, probably in the neighborhood of like four to six inches long, then I'm not going to want to prune this. And this was something I didn't really cover either <laughs> before. I was just kind of like run and gun for all of my friends and family who grow their very traditional sort of peppers you'd use for salsa. Um, so it's like the jalapenos and the serranos, maybe some, um, some shishitos, maybe, you know, little Thai chilies or something, but things that stay in a generally smaller and like very, um, sizable harvest, <laughs> you know, that it will produce more peppers. With these guys, when they're a little bit larger of peppers, it doesn't always produce more peppers and the branching doesn't always help it. So I'll keep an eye on him. And if he starts to seem really lanky, then I may cut. But part of how I start determining if I'm going to cut or not is like, if there's already fruit or flowers forming, I mean, one, it could be because it is at a point where it's exceeding its root medium. And so it kind of signals once all of the roots you know, are filling out the bottom of the container, I think that there's a signal that happens there to the plant that's like, all right, produce seed because you might die. But also, this may be um, kind of like, not the maximum height, but it's getting to a point where you know that it's not going to keep shooting up straight unless you give it like crazy amounts of nitrogen or something maybe. But it's, it should stay kind of in this range and start filling out from there. Now, if I don't see the leaves start filling out when I give it more sun, when I move it outside, then I may go in and prune. But I've kind of stepped back on the larger size peppers as far as, you know, drastically pruning them because it doesn't seem to really help them out. Now when we're looking at, say, oh, here's one in that space um, that I did do a little pruning. So the top on this, it was kind of, it just looked really weak. So if you get a pepper, where the growth is looking weak or it's looking, you know, kind of scraggly and um, you want it <laughs> to look better, a lot of times you can prune that out and it'll start pushing out new growth as a response. And so I'm starting to just see, I pruned it a couple days ago, and so I'm just starting to see that new growth response that I really want. Again, these are cubanelles, so they're not a huge pepper, but they're not super small by any means. I want to make sure that I have that main branch for all the peppers to come out of. Um, I'm not ex anticipating too much breakage, but I am in a high wind area, so if I start seeing plants breaking, then we're going back to the lopping them off pretty short so they can bush out and support themselves in you know, 20 to 40 mile an hour wind on a regular basis. Uh, this is a little dude. This is a pimento de padron that I got from a friend who sells peppers online. And I'm not sure what his like growing setup's like. I think I'm, I know that it's soil, but I don't know like beyond that how he's watering and whatnot. Um, but most of his plants come out really healthy. There's sometimes like the lower leaves are still attached, but usually they're not and they're packed and shipped fairly bare root. But these guys like, I wouldn't prune this even though he's got some height to him so far 
just because like the leaves are looking really nice it's starting to branch out nicely I don't want to change or alter this growth structure until it gets a little more size on it and starts to rebound and recover from you know being packed bare root and wrapped up and shipped to me so he's gonna hang out just the way he is right now um, I suppose like I could prune it and then have it bush out more from here but I don't think that the stem is structurally sound enough to support more growth on top so I'm just going to step back on that and wait if you were to have a stem like this gypsy pepper here then it would be a little different story you know if you had a stockier stem and you had um, a little more growth than that to be honest then maybe you could go in and prune it and did I prune this guy no I think that this one it just started branching out and so if the canopy uh, if the top of the plant which I was calling the canopy but like if it starts to do that vase sort of shape that's similar to the shape that I'm looking for on like a peach tree or a nectarine and I want that sort of open vase open vase shape at the top of the plant because structurally that's going to support the weight of these gypsy pepper peppers which are like um, kind of like baby bell pepper size so maybe a little bit smaller but you can see there's new growth coming out um, this one was definitely packed into a flat at the nursery and instead of you know over anticipating because I saw these two branches kind of going their separate ways and creating more growth on top instead of you know like over anticipating it and trimming it I decided to leave it and let it do its thing and it's starting to branch out in a way that makes sense so this is a shishito that was like those two that I separated <laughs> I grab them like I said I grab them whenever I can um, on this sort of thing I'm probably going to take off these bottom leaves I am taking off these bottom leaves just to uh, have make sure that there's nothing that's touching the soil in case there's any like fungal activity going on down there and which there shouldn't be but you know um, and then you'll notice if you look at it as I rotate it that one side has no leaves on it and the other sides do and that is a direct result and I kind of left it and didn't rotate it hoping it would do this so I could show you that's a direct result of it only getting light from one side so the light comes through this window and it's sitting like this and it's sitting with its back against another plant and then the back doesn't have any leaves so if you have peppers in a greenhouse uh, or if you're getting them from a nursery then you rotate it and it doesn't have any leaves on the back that's probably what's going on there you want to make sure that you're able to get light on it from all sides so that it will branch out well and you'll have a pepper that you don't have to retrain and prune. Now, this guy as a backup, I already have like half a dozen shishitos out there, and shishitos do respond really well to pruning. So I'm going to rotate it tomorrow, and then depending on how it responds to that, and depending on you know if these little bits of new growth start bending in the other direction and balancing it better or not, I may or may not go through and cut a few things off here and there to kind of straighten it out and see if I can't pull the growth back this way. But all of this is corrective. It's not um, doing it because this is the way that it needs to be done. I have seen a lot higher harvests on shishitos, in my experience at least, when I've pruned them at a young age versus when I don't prune them. And I do like that <laughs> because they like aggressively branch out and try to create more plant very early so then they'll set just like a ton of flowers and fruit I think I picked I don't know probably like 30 like 20 like 20 pounds maybe 30 pounds off of like six to eight plants last year over the course of six months and I know that part of it even though they got a slow start because I pruned them so aggressively like part of it was that um, they had so much foliage and they had such quality soil and a ton of it that they were able to like really get their roots in there, get to work and pump out a lot of peppers. So with shishitos, it works really well. Um, I've had it work great with jalapenos, with uh, serranos. I don't recommend it for bell peppers. I did try it last year and I generally don't grow sweet peppers, but I said, okay, well, let me try this with other varieties. And I just didn't get the production to warrant pruning. Now, if you start peppers from seed, you shouldn't have any of these problems. <laughs> Um, this is generally like a buying from the nursery or starting peppers from seed and you're, they're too close together in their containers before you pot them up to the next container or they're not getting enough light because you've started them too early and the artificial light's not 
um, enough hours a day or I mean there's a number of factors but if you start them from seed and these guys were volunteer seeds then you shouldn't have leggy problems because you can control the amount of light that they get and that's really the biggest thing with these guys is like as long as they're getting enough light from all sides then you're gonna have a very evenly growing pepper like these ones I got from my friend in the mail um, just because you're really focused on how much light it's getting and all of the directions that it's getting it from. This guy is a chili that I started at the end of last year that barely germinated. Um, so it's an overwintered pepper. I actually have a couple of overwinters here. There is this Tabasco, this Calabrian, um, and this Habanero Tobago, which is a seasoning pepper. It's not spicy. And you'll see, like depending on how old they were, when I started to overwinter them, you can kind of see like where I cut them back to and then where the new growth is coming out. I'm going to hold off on pruning these further right now because one, they're just like, they're just trying to recover. So I don't want to stress them out further, but also I'm just going to see kind of how the foliage fills in on the overwinters. You generally don't need to prune um, once they come back out because the foliage is going to be very close to wherever you pruned it down to last year. But I just think they look really neat as they start to leaf back out. And hopefully we'll get a good crop off of these guys this year, especially this one. But if not, I have seeds started too, so he'll be okay. Um, let's see who else. Oh, so I have this ghost pepper. And that was one, the super hots that I had in the pruning video were particularly leggy for super hots. And some of them I had started from seeds, some of them I got from the nursery. They just did not get enough light. And this guy has clearly gotten enough light. If you see a pepper plant that is really bushy and squat looking like this, then I generally wouldn't touch it. Like I might if this, this um, particular stem keeps going up and it just keeps getting leggier and leggier, but I'm not seeing the growth out, then one, I need to move it to a place that has a little more light, but I also might just pinch off the tip. Um, I'm, I've kind of, like I said, I kind of stepped back from aggressive pruning with the exception of shishitos, jalapenos, serranos, uh, any of the like really aggressive fruiting peppers, I will aggressively prune. But the ones that are a little bit touchier, I try to not, um, I try to let them do their own thing <laughs> and not mess with them too much. Another one I don't prune are the chili piquins. I don't do those ones anymore at all. Um, I don't think I did those before, but it's just, it's such a tender plant. The fruit is very small. The whole reason, um, we have to remember, like the whole reason that I was pruning in the first place is because plants break. And if you live in a high wind area, if you're buying plants that are really leggy in the first place, or if your plants are growing leggy, then you want to try and kind of suppress the auxins that are making it grow up and push them back out to the side growth so that your plant will be bushier the stem will grow a little thicker in the process and it will be stronger and hold up to the high wind situation. I have lived in basically a wind tunnel and grown in basically a wind tunnel for the last uh, years now, <laughs> like five years now. So most of my um, methodology and advice is factoring around that. It's going, okay, well, like if this is getting hit by a 40 mile an hour wind, like is it going to flex with the wind? Is it going to be short enough that the wind can go around it? Like, can it move through the branches? Or is it going to be so tall that if I don't stake it, it's going to snap and break? Can it support its own fruit? With the chili piquin, the fruit is very, very small, so it can support its own fruit. With something like the gypsy pepper, it depends. If it gets really tall, like, it might not be able to support its own fruit, and then I'm either going to have to stake it or wait and see if it breaks. So certain things um, you basically have to base it on fruit size. So this is like a giant Marconi pepper, right? This is a sweet Italian pepper. It's not going to respond. It's probably going to respond as well to pruning as a bell pepper would. Because it has this branching vase structure on the top, I am going to leave it as is and see what happens. Um, I actually have another one out there that I've pruned, so I'm kind of doing the side-by-side -side comparisons just to see how it responds. I will sometimes prune off the leaves that just don't look good because why well, leave them on? They're draining the plant. It's trying to repair them. I'm popping them off. So there was another one. Um, I don't see it though. <laughs> so 
Yeah, I mean, that's basically, you can definitely, oh, here it is. It's right in front of me. Um, so there's, this is a habanero, and this would be like one of those, um, you got to make a decision exceptions to the rule. Because habaneros are slow growers, they will start blowing up once it gets really hot. Now this has growth at the bottom, so you can see it's trying to bush out, and that actually might catch up with this top growth. Uh, if you wanted to try and push it to go faster, if you had a spot where you um, wanted it to just like shape out, I mean what we're looking at is just pinching off the top here and then letting the other leaves bush out. And so I might actually do that with this guy just to see like how it goes because I do have another one out there that I did not prune. And so I'll usually just go down, uh, like I said before, you know, three, like two or three nodes and then just trim it right above there. So I'll do this one here right there and so it just takes off this little top growth but unless your pepper is really 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 leggy like if it just had this height of this top growth and the stem was as thin as the very top of this all the way down it didn't have all this bottom growth happening then yeah I would chop it off a little bit lower just because I want that pepper to kind of I want the foliage and the stem width to catch up with the vertical growth so that it actually is able to support the fruit that it's growing. Uh, habaneros I'm not as worried about breaking because the fruit is light, but if the fruit is really heavy, then it might be something that you'd want to consider is if this fruit is going to break or not. So, um, so yeah, I mean basically everything that you learn is going to inform what you thought you knew before. and. As I started growing a wider variety of peppers and working with a wider variety and starting my own seed and working with better growers, then you start to look at it and your information changes. <laughs> and I still will shape my plants so that they bush out because I like the structure. I like not having to stake them. If it's working for you, then keep doing that. Um, it's still working for me. I'm still doing it. I just kind of adapt to be a little bit um, less intense <laughs> about how much I prune, but I think that the important thing to realize when it comes to gardening is that there's no one answer for anything. And the information and content that I try to present and provide is less of a, this is how to do X, and more of a, um, if you have this problem, this is how you might try and solve for it. So. If you can keep that in mind <laughs> while you're watching my videos and just kind of, you know, look and expand that horizon as far as um, what are you trying to do? Like, it's not you're just looking for one answer. You're going to be on this constant search for knowledge. And that's just gardening is just a really big, awesome rabbit hole of information and knowledge. There's constantly going to be. Um, different data points that will change your opinion or change your methodology based on you know what you learn and you can't be afraid to change your mind based on that information you can't dig in your heels and be like no this is the way to do it and um, you have to be able to admit sometimes that you're wrong or that maybe you take something too far and nothing really is black and white and everything is flexible and fluid in the garden because that's the only way that you grow. That's the only way that you learn and grow. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I will do my best to answer them. I don't know that like there's much more that can be said about this other than try really hard to give your plants the appropriate amount of light and if you can't manage that then prune them so that they look like they have the appropriate amount of light. But leave me your comments, leave me your questions. Um, hit the subscribe button if this sort of information resonates with you at all. I'm just looking to try and help solve the most common problems that I've run into. Um, I'm not necessarily looking to give you know, hard and fast advice and as your comments and information too help to kind of shape my world, um, I hope that my comments and information kind of help to shape and inform your world. So hit the subscribe button <laughs> if that's what you're into and follow me on Instagram at Flavor Kit because that's where a lot of this stuff goes down and there's always awesome conversations happening there too. So Instagram, subscribe. Until next time, happy gardening.